Thank you. So however you want to do it, take a few minutes. And again, so the part A is that's just algebra 1 slope. Part B, that was the original definition of a derivative. And answer choice C is the alternative form of the definition. But you might remember there's different ways to, to describe these things. And so I'm trying to make sure we understand all the different words we could use to describe each of those three, three things. So give those a try, and then we'll go over them in just a minute. Um, yeah, that's right. Oh, you're hesitant, but you're right. So the specific point, that means I'm using the alternative form. Tangent line, slope of a tangent line means I'm using a derivative. So yes, C. Uh, Mark, how about the slope of a secant line? Is this one? Is it still C? It's, it's not C. It, it's close to C. If we took off the limit, that would, be the, that would be a secant line. But when we put the limit on there, we went from a secant line. That's when we changed it. We moved our secant line down to be a tangent line. So it's so if I've covered up the limit, then that would be the slope of a secant line. So which one of my remaining choices looks a lot like C, but without the limit statement? A. a. So secant line is not a derivative. So it couldn't be B or C. Emma, how about the slope of a curve at any point? So that would be the slope between two points. You would need two points to do A. But at any point, so it's B or C. C is for a specific point. Alternative form. That gives you the derivative at C, the, the slope at C. B is the derivative at any value of x. So at any value of x, it would be B. Tierney, how about the instantaneous rate of change at a specific point? It is C. So instantaneous rate of change, that's code word for derivative. And derivative at a specific point would be the alternative form. Nikita, how about the average rate of change? A. That's definitely A. Average rate of change is, is algebra slope. Natalie, how about number six? The instantaneous rate of change at any point. Mm -hmm. B, good. Instantaneous rate of change is derivative. At any point means we're using the original definition, not the alternative form. Uh, Lauren, oh, well, I think you get the easy one now here. What's, <laughs> it's fact, it's labeled. What's the alternative form definition? C. And Andrew, what's the original definition? B. Okay, so again, the idea is concept-wise, understand those three formulas, but understand that there's a bunch of different ways we could refer to them. And that any point versus specific point differentiates between original and alternate form. Anything that has a derivative is not just slope. It's going to be one of the derivatives. So again, there's not like a section on the test that is matching like that, but we'll ask questions using these words, and so you got to know which words call up which formula, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, part two of warm-ups. One through three, I want you to use the shortcut, so those should go quick. And then number four, Use the original definition to find that derivative. But I'll just go ahead and point out, 3 and 4 are the same. So 3, I want you to use the shortcut. 4, use the long process, but you'll know the answer because you just did the shortcut. So 3 and 4 is the same question, different technique, so you should get the same answer. So give those a try. 
So on one through three, I specified use the shortcut. I'm I'm never going to specify that again, basically, because if I don't specify, I expect you to use the shortcut. Like, why would you not? Why would you go through the, the process if you don't have to? So use the shortcut. Unless it specifically says to use the definition, then use the shortcut. You don't have to ask again. Like, you don't. I don't want to use the long way around. You don't want to use the long way around. Use the shortcut, unless it specifically says to use the definition or use the alternative form. All right, um, Sarah, how about number one? What's the derivative of number one? Good. Uh, and let's label it. A few of you didn't label it, um, and that's okay. I didn't make a big deal out of it yet, but I don't want to just see 15x minus 4. I mean, that, that is the derivative, but we want to label it. Um, because later, um, we'll use the original, we'll use the first derivative, we'll use the second derivative for different parts of a problem. And so if you don't have it labeled, and so you take a first derivative, you take a second derivative, and then you have to use it for other things, when you go back and look, you can't figure out what was going on. So just make sure that it's clearly labeled that that's the first derivative. Um, Melissa, how about the second, number two there? Um, oh, question. question. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sarah, how did you get from negative 12x to, to negative 12? Um, so the coefficient is the coefficient is, I mean, the power is 1, which is 12 times 1, and then we lower the, uh, we decrease the power by 1, so then it's x to the 0, which is just 1. I mean, it, yeah. Great explanation. Is that? So x to the 0 is 1? Yes. Anything to the zero is one, except for zero. That's another. That's a calculus conversation. But anything other than zero, raised to the zero is one. The other way to look at the derivative of negative 12x is not really the power rule, but to think derivative means slope. If I'm looking at y equals negative 12x, the slope of that's negative 12, so my answer is negative 12. So you can do the power rule part, which is what Tara explained. Or you can just think, well, that's a line with slope negative 12, so the answer is negative 12. Either way. All right, Melissa, how about number two? Um, I got 100x to Yep. So again, that's that's a great example of one that's super easy with the shortcut rule and would be, I guess, not impossible, but pretty close to impossible using the long way around, right? Because you'd have x plus h to the 100th. I mean, theoretically, you know how to do that. That would take forever. So there's a good reason to use the, the shortcut rule. Uh, Connor, how about the last one? Um, what do you do with that? Oh, it should be 2x. It should be 2x. So you bring the 2 down, decrease the power by 1, 2x. And good, on 2 and 3, there was a constant out there. Um, that goes away. For some reason, sometimes people forget they'll, look, they'll put plus 73 or minus 2 at the end. All right, number four, I'll do number four. Uh, I, it's the same question as number three, so I kind of already know my answer should be 2x. Uh, let's see, so the limit, h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That's the definition of the derivative. So I need to plug in pieces to that. Some of you kind of plugged in on the fly watching you work. Others of you out to the side find f of x plus h and then plug it in. Either way is fine. So let's see, x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 2. So all of that goes in for f of x plus h. squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 2 minus x squared minus 2 all over h. Again, these is, this turns into an algebra problem. And not really even a hard algebra problem, just a be careful algebra problem. x squareds go away, 2s go away. Uh, 
some people won't show this step because they can keep up with everything. I, there's a whole lot of canceling out if you keep going without rewriting. So I, I leave it up to you, but I'm going to show an extra step here. Well, the H will divide into both. So that leaves 2x plus h. And now I can substitute 0 in for h. And I get 2x, which I knew was the answer because it was the same thing as number 3. And a reason I did this is on the test, there are a few questions where I ask you to use the, the definition. And what I see most people do when they get this question is, like right away, they know the answer because the shortcut rule says the answer is 2x. And so I see that like right away because they, it's not cheating. It's just you know the right way to get there or you know, you know what the final answer should be. And then you go through the whole process and then you're like, okay, I got it right. And yes, that also means that some people, well, everyone knows that that's the right answer. A few people will put, kind of start with that and then try to work backwards and try to fudge their way and hope that I don't look at their work too closely. And it, it'll depend on how closely I look at your work, if you get away with that or not. Questions on any of those?